Shalom, welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, and we have with my co-host Mark Rohn at Statewide News Service, jbiztechphilly.com, and as you can see right here, now columnist for the Jewish Press. And I'm having a lot of fun with all three assignments, Rabbi. I have a column in the Jewish Press called Albany Beat, and I talk about how government relates to the Jewish community or doesn't, as the case may be. Yeah. So um, with us today is a real good friend of the Jewish community, Senator Yu Farley from Schenectady. Uh, welcome back to the Jewish View. Thank you, Mark. So it's so Rabbi, good to nice see you. nice to be you. with you. And I'm so sorry that you're retiring, but you yeah. might be happy, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> It's a little bittersweet, to yeah. be honest with you. It's, it's difficult. I did it for family reasons right. and so forth, and uh, but I've loved my career, and I'll miss it, but life moves on. That's right, yeah. and uh, you're 85, or will be 85 in a few days. So 21st of November. I'll, oh, I'll on the 18th of November. Well, we're birthday. very close. We're both yeah. Scorpios. And uh, Kathy Young is the 22nd of November. I didn't know that. And, uh, <laughs> and should I tell you all the other November? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gustavo Rivera is the uh, 17th of November. Oh boy, we're all we right in all there. We all Scorpios. So. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, anyway, well, uh, so I just wanted to uh, let you, you know. Want to go on I, the past or the future over here? I didn't just well, I want to go. I, I want. I don't want to dwell on the past too much, but I do want to ask you, you know, about how would you like to be remembered? What would you like your legacy to be? Uh, I, I would like to think that I, I served honorably and uh, represented. Uh, uh, I, I love my career and I'm proud of it. I'll be very honest with you. And I've never seen such a warmth that has come to me everywhere I go. The stewards, people come up that I don't know, and they thank me for my service, and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, which is nice because, unfortunately, so many in public office today are, are, are vilified, and you, they talk about crooks. But most of the people that I serve were their selfless, good people. Mm -hmm. And but that's people you serve with. What I'm asking you is about your legacy. I see. Well, I'm, I'm proud of some of the things I did. I'm, I'm the father of hospice for the United States of America, uh, first in the nation, and uh, that's certainly a, an achievement. Well, I think of you as Mr. Librarian. Yeah, I love that. Are, that's been a labor of love, you know, as a professor. I think that's going to be your legacy as uh, the libraries. And uh, boy, those people have been so good to me. And I have been. Uh, uh, very, very devoted to libraries. And when I first came into the Senate as a young professor, Senator Anderson says to me, you're a professor, you've got libraries. Because I'll tell you what, they're very astute people, they read everything, they're very knowledgeable, and you just don't give them a, a, a quick answer back. And, and right. uh, I, I, I always responded to them, and I love libraries. Well, I think there should be a push for the Schenectady Public Library to be named in your honor. Well, that's very because nice. Because I think that would be appropriate for the, you. Uh, NILA, the NYLA, the yeah. National Library, just last week changed their annual award that they give to the Advocate for Libraries to the Senator Hugh T. Farley Advocate wow. Award. Wow. Really? That's, that's excellent. That's So wonderful. that'll be there in memorial for... Um, they're, every year they give a, a, an award to the, mm. an advocate for libraries statewide. And it was named be after your me. Name. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Yeah. So now I also, you know, I mean, n not to have this uh, idea come so close to me mentioning that you're 85, but you were the c chairman of the Committee on Aging. That first one. I was first the first one. chairman right. of the Committee on Aging. So At that time, I was considered too young for that. <laughs> yeah. So I think that could, to it, okay. that could be your legacy as well because there was so much that you did for the uh, A lot of the major laws, respite, that was my idea where you give somebody a break that's taking care of their own elderly. Uh, I was very pleased with that one. That's caught on all over the country. Uh, I also started the Community Services Act with all of the uh, county offices for the aging. I had a lot of aging legislation that I was, I was once uh, speaking to the uh, uh, and the national, the na out in the National American Medical Association's national annual meeting in, in San Diego, and I had a very nice prepared speech. And the, the maid at the uh, mot hotel that I was staying at saw, thought that I w my, they'd lost my luggage, and all I had was this speech and uh, some toothpaste and so <laughs> forth. 
and she took, she read the speech, and she was so impressed with it, she took it home with her. No. And I went to get the speech to go give it. Oh my gosh! And she had gone really? down. She lived <laughs> almost down by Mexico. And uh, anyway, <laughs> I started ad libbing the speech, and they went and got the, brought it up to me. Oh really? Yeah, oh, so I did have it. That's funny. <laughs> That's a good That's one. Funny. Over here. So um, let's go to the future over here, Mark. Okay. Yeah. So, so what's on? Well, we just had elections, okay. and what's you know, because obviously you're in the Senate, so therefore you know about what the Senate. What's news in the Senate that's changing, uh, or maybe be the same? All the same. Uh, no, the Senate actually grew. The Republican majority picked up a seat, and we're very pleased with that. And it's uh, a big difference Where's because it's thirty-two. Over it's here. Buffalo area. Yeah. Mark Panepinto uh, was served one term. And didn't really like it, I guess, and he left. And Senator-elect Jacobs is the new yes, senator Chris from Chris Jacobs there. was the city controller or county controller? Clerk, I think. Clerk, county yeah. clerk. And, and he's a very wealthy guy. Is he? He's, yeah, he's very wealthy. Uh, well, guy. he's got family wealth. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, that's interesting. He won big. And, and uh, we're also uh, probably, in my judgment, have a relationship with the independent Democrats. So we'll have a very comfortable And there's eight majority. of them now, or seven yeah. of them. Yeah, because so Senator Hamilton just moved over. Jesse Hamilton and also from this Crown new... From Heights, Brooklyn. Right, and this new senator from uh, Harlem or the Upper West Side, yeah, so uh, Marisol Alcantara, is going to be with the... So uh, we're very pleased with that, and so. I think Senator Flanagan has uh, really done a good job as leader and so forth, and uh, I'm... Uh, I, I'm very, very pleased with to, to see it continue. And your successor, your seat remained Republican. Yes, it did. Uh, I have, after it was reapportioned, I captured a seat. You know, I beat a Democrat to come in here. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mary Ann Krupsack, if you go back that far, had my seat. And then Dr. Isabella had it, Fred Isabella, and I beat him. Right, that's who you beat. Yeah. And, um, uh, but after it reapportioned now, it's the second largest Senate district in the state and the most Republican. That's right. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's got the best enrollment, so. Yeah, and you go into Hamilton County. I got all of Hamilton County. All of County. Hamilton County. That's where I grew up. Right, Indian Lake. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Indian Lake. Gosh, she doesn't forget <laughs> anything. <laughs> You ever been up to Indian Lake, Rabbi? No, I haven't. Well, Mark I, doesn't take me up to these I camp, places. Though, I man. camp at 13th Lake, which is okay. in North Creek, just over the, the Warren County right. border. You know but, who used to hang out in North Creek or North River was Robert Kennedy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. But I camp, that's where I camp, and I go into Indian Lake when, or, you know, when I have to get provisions or whatever. So. Yeah. But it's great in terms of the fall and when you see the leaves right. change. Yeah, you, know, you go down Indian Lake Speculator, yeah, you go down those areas yeah. there, and it's yeah. beautiful. Teddy yeah. Roosevelt was at North River when McKinley was assassinated. Right. He was upstate? Yeah, yeah, they had to have a train. They had to find That's him. That's right. They had to have the train come up. and. You know your history, Mark. I try, I'm impressed. You know? <laughs> I try. Um, you know, I always tell people history was easier when I was taking it in school because there was less of it. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, uh, so... You know, what, what do you, so you see the, the Senate is going to be, the state Senate is going to be strong mm -hmm. in terms of the Republican side. The uh, Assembly is way over, on, you know, Democrats control probably 105 seats. Yeah, they're really a, we, a weak minority, I'll yeah. put it that way. So I guess your successor, Jim Tedisco, is happy to some extent to be I out of there. I think he's been taking my pulse for a lot of years. <laughs> 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 but I'm just surprised that your son didn't. Bob Farley. Well, he, he does very him. well, and, and yeah. uh, he was, uh, uh, my son was the deputy uh, uh, attorney general under Vaco, and uh, And also ran the Schenectady his, County he was leader. The he was the leader, right. the chairman of the board, and so forth, and then it went into the minority, and right. he's very happy. He's got a very large role in, in the uh, Senate. Not only does he work for Senator Felder, but uh, he also is with Senate Finance, so and covers a lot of their legal problems. Simchafeld is an interesting person. I guess your son would be a Republican, and uh, Simchafeld is officially a Democrat, but he caucuses with the Republicans. He's a good conservative Jewish boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm friends with him over here. You want to hear an interesting even story? So my son is in New York. I have a lot of kids. And he's going to Toro College. So he's taking my finance, but one of the courses is marketing. Shows up the course, who's his professor? Simcha Felder. 
Sip so, Gefelder, yeah. well, he, not only is he one of the loveliest men I've ever known, a very humane, he's a rabbi, he has mm -hmm. a PhD, and uh, he, he's just an incredibly uh, uh, mm -hmm. gifted person, and, mm -hmm. but a very decent man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, and uh, we, we couldn't work out the schedule for him to be on the show when there was session uh, yeah. this past mm -hmm. year, so we'll be next have year. to get him twice next year. <laughs> but anyhow, mm -hmm. uh, so what did you make of the presidential election? What I was surprised, thoughts? I'll put it that way, I'll be very honest with you, I was surprised. I guess I believed in the polls, but you know what? Uh, I think it's good. I'm, I'm particularly, for somebody that's uh, very interested in Israel, I think it's very positive for Israel. I think that the current administration has not treated Israel well. And uh, I think that uh, uh, President-elect uh, will. And uh, I'm, uh, I think you're, you're going to see it. It's good. It's healthy for the country. I think he's going to surround himself with decent people. I'm very impressed with uh, uh, Governor Pence, who mm -hmm. will be the vice president. Right. I think he's going to be a, a huge asset to the president. Normally, the vice president is just interested in the president's health, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I think he's going to play a large role, and he should. So, Incidentally, he was the one that brought uh, uh, Speaker Ryan into the fold. As a matter of fact, he went up there in Ryan and uh, Pence campaigned all over Wisconsin the last few days, the last week in Wisconsin, went for, mm -hmm. uh, went for uh, Trump. Trump. You know, yeah. well, again, because it's a very interesting scenario anyway, because Trump's a businessman, but, you know, some people always, you know, I mean, they just cut up politicians. Ah, yeah, they're just yes, no, and they just talk. But really, obviously, there's an art to be a politician. You have to say the right things and take, you know, make the right uh, statements. And, you know, Trump has a little bit of a problem talking about the right statement. So you're right. Maybe, uh, you know, the Pence will be, hey, you know, listen, I got to tell you how to move around. You know, there is an art to being a politician. Absolutely. And it's a, shoot off he's mouth. never he's the only president that's never been elected or been uh, to anything and not been a military person. Right. Well, that's, that's interesting. Right. Yeah, he's never been in the military, never been elected to any previous yeah. office. That's interesting. And he, 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 he gets in trouble with his tongue. And uh, uh, I, I think the last few days, I thought his, uh, his speech was very well mm -hmm. tempered and uh, correct. And uh, I think he'll be all right. He surrounds himself with bright people. That's when you important. When you go into the voting booth, just... Uh, uh, do you just genuflect and vote all Republican? No. I was always a supporter of Sam Stratton, if you remember him. Okay. And I was chairman of Sam Stratton's retirement dinner. Uh -huh. But uh, generally speaking, I, I've gotten more conservative as I get older. Mm -hmm. I think most people right, do. What right. the Churchill say, if you're yes. not young and liberal, mm -hmm. you yes. have no heart. And if as you get older and you're not conservative, you have no mind. That's so, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've gotten more conservative as I've gotten older. So where... Uh, My wife has always been very conservative. Mm -hmm. So where did you... Uh, so, so did you vote for Trump? I mean, is this something Yes, I did. You, you did? Okay. He wasn't my candidate, to no. be honest with you, originally. Who was? Uh, I liked Rubio. Okay. Rubio. Marco yeah, I did. Rubio. I did like Marco Rubio. I liked several... That was a very broad-based, talented group up there. Yeah, yeah, they, they, absolutely. They had a... It, it used to astound me how Trump knocked each one off. <laughs> I, mean, well, he, he, I he, thought of it as, really, I thought of it as Celebrity Apprentice. And, and if you ever watch that reality show, how... I did, you know, I have it. it every week, someone would be, you're fi he'd say, you're fired, you're fired every week. Boy, he and would go this after would be them. after yeah. every one of them. And then w once he started calling them a name and putting a label on them, they would drop out, they would drop out, you know. <laughs> and it'd be he, like, you're fired. I have to give the guy credit. Uh, he, he's smart, I'll tell you that. And he brought down not just a dynasty, he brought down two dynasties. He brought down the Bush dynasty and he been the Clinton dynasty. And he took on the press, yeah. which was incredible. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think we need more of that. He, he used... <laughs> not the press, I mean, you the press. He used the press, <laughs> but, but he utilized the press. He, yes. took, he, yeah, he, he didn't have to spend any money. He, he got it all done free. But he did spend $100 million of his own money, and I'll bet you he's already gotten it back because his real estate... Uh, 
uh, holdings probably increased probably. by more than that. Yeah. So, well, but that's Trump like you spend. Because he's now Trump on and he's president. And, you know, that's like the rabbi spending $10. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know? He's but worth he's, hundreds of millions. Yeah, you know, so I, but I'll bet you that Trump never gets audited again on his taxes. <laughs> I, let's hope that I'll that tax you. department <laughs> gets out of the po political business. Well, and no, but I think that's outrageous. Well, but he's, Trump said that you know the IRS has audited him every year yeah. for the past decade, so I'm sure that will never happen again. Now, well, <laughs> I don't know. I I, I, yeah. I would just think that I would like them to just do their business and not be political and so forth. Well, that's what bothers me. Some of the things that is happening, where you've got the agencies getting political. Well, did you think Comey was political with what he did with the emails and saying? No, I th I happen to admire him. Yeah, and I uh, I I think he was under pressure that uh, he didn't want to have the candidate for president indicted, and I uh, I understand the word that I've gotten that the, the department, the rank and file department people, weren't speaking to him in the halls and so forth, getting upset with him uh, because he did not. My goodness, if you, when he said he castigated it with everything that was wrong and then said we're not going to prosecute. Mm. So, and then he op reopened the issue. Just well, he, so he told to Congress he would if yeah. more things showed up, which they, it did. You know. I don't think that that had a lot. People had made up their minds, I think, yeah. by that time. So what do you make of, the, uh, of what happened in New York State with John Faso? Uh, winning. He's like a son to me. I like John Faso. He's a very decent and a very honorable and a very bright person. He'll be a wonderful congressman. So that was the uh, right choice to succeed Chris Gibson? I couldn't think of anyone better. You know, the polls were so off. I mean, you were saying at the beginning that you were looking at the polls. Yes. But these polls were just, they, I, were, they were just saying Faso was one point ahead and he was losing at one point. I don't know, maybe the public is fickle. They changed their mind. I don't the think they were minute. telling the truth. Jim Douglas, who was governor of Vermont, a very <laughs> dear friend of mine, incidentally, uh, I called him up to congratulate him on winning as governor. And I said, are you going to invite me up to your mansion? He says, I don't have one, but i got a pull-out bed in Montpelier, they give me. <laughs> and, and <laughs> anyway, he, uh, uh, he said he was 15 points down two weeks before the election. And the RNC withdrew all support and help, and he ended up winning by 10 points. Mm -hmm. I don't think some people tell the truth, particularly yeah, well, in, when, they, yeah, when they're no, polled. Something's off. And, and now with cell phones, they can't get to a lot of people. Well, they have a way of doing that, I'm told. I, I, that fellow from Siena. Uh, Steve I, Greenberg? I, yeah, right? Steve Greenberg I, told me that they do, they do check with the cell phones. You know, but people just, you know, there are so many... You're right. People are not telling the truth for whatever reason, even though it's anonymous. They're just not. You know, the thing that I noticed in this election, and talking to my uh, constituents out there, an awful lot of people that didn't vote, the working middle class, that had ignored politics, got very, very much in favor of Trump. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Rust Belt states went for Trump. The and people were the, the, the old Reagan Democrats. Yeah. They, you look at that map and you see the, all that sea of red and all those states. And uh, they were being ignored yeah. by uh, both parties. You know? and tr tr Trump is smart. I'll tell you, I gave him, I'll tell you, I give him credit. Well, could you imagine if he didn't win what everyone would be saying now about him? I mean, just... They'd, they'd be oh, they said terrible things oh. about him. I mean, they... It, it, there's riots going on in the street now. Mm -hmm. yeah, even after he won. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. He's not my president. Uh, what do you see as the, um, as the working relationship between the governor of New York and the U state senate? Did you get along well with, the, with Andrew Cuomo? Yes, I did. Uh, to be honest with you, I did. Uh, and his father. I, well, it's just my, I, I kind of get along with people. I, I, yeah, but you know, they, they say that Andrew's not cut from the same mold as his father. Uh, some say that. Yeah. Uh, uh, his father was very competitive. Don't kid yourself. But uh, I was very close with his father. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's been very nice to me. It, 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 and uh, the, the relationship's a little frosty right now because he, he got involved in several of the races, mm -hmm. not successfully. 
He did not get involved too much in the incumbents that are running, but mm -hmm. some of the, the targeted races that we were desperately trying to win. And so it's a little frosty. But uh, Senator Flanagan, the, the leader, has a manner of getting along with people. Mm -hmm. He's not a confrontational person. And I suspect that uh, uh, the, the, it'll... The, the, it'll warm up? It'll warm up. Okay. Not just be so chilly in the winter, but yeah. it'll be... A, a, but there's, yeah. there's some people that are, you know, they get over it, but... Uh, it, Look, there are some uh, people in the Senate on both sides who feel the only... You know, there are Democrats who feel the only good Republican is a dead Republican, and there are nice Republicans who feel the only good Democrat is a dead Democrat. And, you know, on both yeah. sides, there are polarizing figures, yeah. and then they have the majority of really the Senate that in the way. middle. That's, oh, I know you didn't. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'll tell you, some of the Democrats have been very, very kind to me. And, no one, yeah. Uh, did you uh, campaign for Jim Tedisco? Oh, yeah. Did I you, endorsed him. Out, I no, him. but were you out there on the hustings and yeah, walking? Best of good, yes. I, did, I was there with him as much as I can, you know, and so forth, yes. I didn't see you in commercials with him. That's why I was wondering. That was up to him. I know, I know. I'm just asking. Yeah, I'm I just know. Uh, I endorsed him, and he knew mm -hmm. that. He, he, uh, he knew me. Were you, yeah, were you surprised about uh, Craig Apple? endorsing George Amador? And being I didn't know that. You didn't see the commercial with Craig Apple? I'll over, be darned. Yeah. George was, Amador is, a, is, is quite a young man. I'm, I, everybody's a young man to me, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I did not know that. I okay. missed that one. Okay, yeah. It was about the uh, white... Uh, Hugh Carey endorsed me in a primary, you know. Wow. Yeah, Hugh Carey went on my fundraising letter. And, and was that a positive or a negative for you? <laughs> <laughs> I happen to like Hugh Carey a yeah, lot. Yeah, but, but did your people, did your constituents say, oh, well, Hugh Carey's endorsing this guy? You know. It helped me in a prime. I was in a primary with Roy McDonald, where they spent a, a change in New York, spent a couple million against well, me. How, and how uh, I won it four to one, so it didn't hurt me. When, with re, after redistricting? When was this? The, Roy McDonald? Roy McDonald primaried me, and... Um, uh, uh, when he was, then he moved out of the district, and he after that, oh. and he ran for Bruno's seat and be, wow. won it. Oh, I didn't even realize we, I, that, it, that part. That was a very uh, heated primary, mm. but we got along. He, he became a senator later. Yeah, right. And then and he voted we, for same-sex marriage, and then he became an ex-senator. That's true. <laughs> so. He didn't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what? What do you see as the? Uh, as, you know, I asked you about this, about your legacy, but uh, what would you like, which direction would you like to see the state Senate go? Is it, you want them to be more conservative or more moderate or? Well, I want them to survive whatever it takes, but mm -hmm. I think you have to need a little balance in government. Yeah. A any uh, monolithic uh, uh, government is not good. Well, we have that on the federal level now with the, every, well, it's, it's, both houses Republican. Uh, and, with a one vote, uh, one vote uh, majority, uh, majority in the Senate, in the Senate which right. is kind of tight. Yeah, but it kept Schumer from being Senate majority leader. <laughs> that's true. Gosh. <laughs> well, that's what the, He's Senate the minority leader, leader, you know. Because uh, it's 51. Yeah, because it's 51-49. Uh, or 51-49. Yeah. Really that close? Well, not really, because there's a Louisiana senator that, that's in a runoff because oh. it was three or four. They had to get 50%. And it was four Republicans running. Uh -huh. So that will go Republican. So there will be 52 to 48, Eight. I think, okay. eventually. So that's what they Incidentally, I think it was that Senator Amyot from uh, New Hampshire. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. She um, did not endorse. She wouldn't support Trump. Right. That may have hurt her. Did she know. lose? Yeah, she lost. Kelly Ayotte lost. Yes, oh. Kelly Ayotte lost. I see. It was a very tight. It was only 800 votes or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She just... Uh, That's New Hampshire. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Clinton carried New Hampshire, I believe. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I've forgotten. Yeah, but anyway. It was, that was also very tight. Very tight, yeah. So, uh, you know, are you, what are you going to miss most about being... Involved in the you know, camp, you it's know? been such a large part of my life. Yeah, I know. My goodness, yeah. uh, for, for 40 years, I'm the second longest serving in the history. Uh, did you know Senator, Senator Markey? Markey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 50 years. Yeah. Nobody will match Mar that one. 
Yeah, from Staten Island. He was there 50 years. 50 you years. So uh, I'll just miss the routine. You will. I'll, I'll get over it. I, my yeah. wife says I'm very hyperactive, so I'll, I'll just keep busy. Well, Senator Salan came back last year to visit, and I asked him about how he's doing, and he said, you know, I love, the best thing was being defeated. <laughs> he really? says, I love being, I love having my own schedule, my own life, and not being here all the time. And, uh, I, was, I uh, as I look back, I, I loved my career. Yeah. I mean, but I'll tell you what I liked even better. What I liked even better, which I truly loved, was teaching yeah. at the university. I loved my students and my class. They became like your family and your children. Is it possible that if you, you're going to relocate to Florida? No, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll stay around here. I'll you will? Be, be there. Because I was going to ask you if maybe you'd run for office down in Florida. You know what I might do? I'm a member of the Actors Union. Oh. I had that part oh, in The Place yeah. Beyond the Pines. Yeah. And I, I'm in the Actors Union. And if they're making a movie, they have to hire me. So oh. I may they make movies. Around, I'm around Tampa. Uh -huh. If they're making a movie, I may show up. And just, yeah. uh, may I'll take the part. I'll yeah. take the part because they pay you pretty well. Are you, you're, not Sar you're not in Sarasota, are you? No, I'm uh, Port Ritchie, which is north of Tampa. Oh, north of Tampa. Well, Sarasota, south of Tampa. And I was almost, I was offered a job at the Sarasota Jewish Community Center. No kidding. And I turned it down My because brother, uh, I didn't want to be involved. I live with cicada bugs, and yeah. they have cicada bugs everywhere. Sarasota's a lovely And the wonderful. red tide. Yeah. The red tide. Uh, Sarasota is a lovely, lovely city. Now it is, yeah. When this goes back... 25 years or it so. It still so. was lovely. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, good Jewish community there, too. Yeah, in Sarasota, a very wealthy one. Yeah. That's right. So have you uh, had a... Uh, so, so you're going to miss that, but what about staying in touch with your fellow senators? I mean, obviously... I will. You know, you come to the pilot's dinner, you'll yeah. come, you know... The pilots are the assembly. They don't invite me there. It's called the Senate Club. The Senate Club? Yeah, that's what oh, they call okay. it. Okay, well, pilots are what? That's the assembly. That's the assembly? Yeah. They don't have, okay, so the Senate has the Senate Club. It's, which is the same thing. but And uh, it's uh, oh, anyone who's been in office more than 10 years? That's the pilots, I think. And but what the, about the Senate it Club? It used to be, you had to be in office like eight years, and now the Senate Club, the year that I was the president of it, mm -hmm. They had a thing that said, if you've just been a senator, you're eligible. So, oh, really? <laughs> Even for a yeah, few months? Yeah, yeah. So, and some of them that have been served one year are active members, but they all come back. So who's the guy before Simca Felder who was there? Starobin. David Starobin could be a... <laughs> yeah, Simca Felder always used to remind the majority leader, you endorsed him, and it's over me. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you going, you know, it's, it's really strange because this past session, uh, there was no one taken out in handcuffs or indicted. And that's a really low bar to have for a successful legislative year, you know. I know. And, and, and I'm just wondering if you're going to, you know, not, maybe not miss that part of Well, the, I felt so badly on that situation. For instance, uh, if Joe Bruno didn't have... Uh, uh, he spent millions defending himself. Right, right, right. So many of these, they don't, they don't have the assets to right. do that. And I thought that Tom Libus, it was very sad. That, that was a very decent, good man. Now, did his son do something wrong? I, 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 don't, I had him in class, incidentally, his son. Uh, but Tom Libus, he wasn't forthright talking to the FBI. And his whole life was ruined for that. And he died uh, almost, uh, I think he was a convicted felon mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because he wasn't forthright in talking about his son or something. Mm -hmm. uh, as a lawyer, you, know, you got to be careful what you say. Mm -hmm. And he, did he commit any crime? No. He, to, he told a lie. We know people that have taken, told lies. Yes. Yes, we have, and they don't get become That's convicted right. felons. That's right, but I, meant, I, I felt sorry for him. That's a, I thought that was a very sad situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do things for your son, you do things for your family. Uh, most people do Dean anything Scalos for this. Did, you know, was I, again, that's another one I thought son. was kind of unfair, yeah. because I, I don't know what the, Dean Skelos basically was trying to help his son who was pushing the envelope pretty far, and mm -hmm. uh, his life is destroyed. Mm -hmm. 
So you have to be very careful in this business. You do, and it, you I, don't get paid enough. Do you think the legislator should get a pay raise? Uh, I think that they probably deserve it. I, I'm financially secure, right. and it wasn't something that was that meaningful to me. Right. Because I, I worked two jobs as a professor right. and, and that. Uh, and, uh, but I, I think that they deserve the pay raise. Everybody deserves one. But, what do you uh, think it should go up to? I don't know. I mean, well, you have I, no stake in this now, so I'm just curious what you... Well, I think it's what it's going to up to. I think, did I hear 128? Was that the Well, number? it was 116, it was 128. They were battling around in uh, quite a few numbers, and I just... See, you know, I won't get that. No. Yeah. <laughs> but that's also what's so unfair, is that, you know, all these legislators who served in between, you know, the, the two pay raises are not going to benefit from any of that, and people who didn't serve, who are just coming in, will benefit. Yeah, I know. And it's just not fair because it's such a long span. Well, I, I, I think just that, philo particularly, philosophically uh, For instance, the, the, the legislators from downstate New York City and so forth, seven, in most of the assembly, uh, they don't get anything more than that 79. Right. And that that's uh, having two homes and a few other things, It's not. It's they're underpaid, I think. Well, then they knew what they were getting into. I, they so. could always say that, but yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of people that won't get into it. Right. And, and that's, I think we need high quality people there, too. Okay. There is and you are high there. quality. Well, and that's we're nice. going to miss you, and uh, we're going to miss everything that you stood for, and that you, uh, and hopefully other people will emulate you, right. and that your name will be as synonymous as John Markey. And you will have uh, Hugh Farley known for a very long time in the Senate. So. Senator, thank you very much for all your service. And, you know, in, in the future, just do what you want to do and make it pleasure, but do it with good health. Yes. God bless you and your work. And, and thank, thank you for you your service. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. I, that's very meaningful thank to you. me.